compatibility check, or again, inspecting that document. Of course, here you'll find your properties, and again, um, if you're looking at encrypting or using some of the restrictions that Microsoft has built in with their server solutions, you're going to want to call our Fando Tech folks. They have wonderful knowledge on this. And again, you're going to have more capabilities as you continue to invest in your Microsoft server solutions. That provides security. And again, in our industry, we have to be mindful that our confidentiality and our intellectual properties can be found here in our Microsoft tools. Very important in this day to consider that as something to protect. As we're thinking about our sharing options, many times we're bringing these PowerPoint slides off-site. You're not on your network. You might have to publish these elsewhere. And some of those most powerful tools can be found under Send or Publish. Like I, I said earlier in our program, I invite you to click now again on your Office button on your Publish command. That Publish command gives you capabilities to publish your slides. There are library capabilities now. That's new for 2007. You can package this for a CD. You can burn it. You're going to have to think about how you link your files, whether you'd like to embed them or link them. If you'd like to change the properties, how large of a file size that you can set so that it's automatically linked instead of embedded, you can set that through the Office button PowerPoint options as well. For those of you using servers, blogs, perhaps you're using your server workspace options, you again have options underneath Publish to go ahead and do that. Remember, just a quick reminder, that Pack and Go wizard is no longer with us. For those of you taking your PowerPoint off-site to trade shows or perhaps to conferences you're presenting out, and you're at an industry hall where perhaps you can't be guaranteed you have access to PowerPoint, you can download a 2007 PowerPoint viewer that's available to you in case your client or your industry trade show is not supporting an office environment. That is still available through. And if anybody needs that after the presentation, please email us or go on online here on our chat capability, and we can send that link out to you. You are going out to a Microsoft Office site. Now, this has to be one of the biggest tools in our toolbox now for 2007. This is SmartArt, folks. I invite you to click on the Insert tab. This is a powerful tool. And I, if there are any consultants on the line, I'm really sorry. This could represent a little bit of a loss of business for you. Because with a click of a button, if you are in your normal slide view and you click to add some bullets. Now, what you're seeing on the left-hand side is our old way of doing things, folks. This is the 2003 bulleted list. Bullet, bullet, bullet. Bullets mean boring. There are too many words on that. You've already lost half my audience by putting up that slide. However, if I decide to insert a smart art, this is a graphic, and this is an interactive tool, and all of a sudden you have, again, 50 to 100 graphics now that instead of using words, I can use a powerful graphic to communicate a message. They're organized by functionality. They're organized by use. But I promise you, it's a more compelling message. And if you're leaving your audience with a thought, with a message, you're looking to increase your recall if you're at an industry trade show with all of your competitors, this smart art is going to be a powerful tool for doing that. You're communicating a message. You're tying a graphic around it, which automatically increases the efficacy, the power of your tool to deliver a message. Now, again, this is a tool that can be found across any of the applications. I find its more, most powerful again, application here is in PowerPoint. The visual comes together very nicely. That's found, of course, under the Insert tab. And you have to consider, if you are saving this as a 2003 PowerPoint PPT, an older version, if you're sending this out to somebody who doesn't have 07, you will get a, com a compatibility flag. These graphics are so dynamic. They pop in their graphics. You won't be able to edit them once you save it as a 2003 version. So this is one of the new tools. You can use it in 07. You can save it down to another version. However, you may be a little bit impacted to change it once it's in, a, in another format. So just as an FYI, you'll want to pay attention to your save options with this new tool. Now let's move on. Charting, what a powerful integration here between Excel and PowerPoint. 
you now have at your disposal all of the new tools and functionality in Excel can be found right here in PowerPoint. Once again, insert tab. You'll recognize this if you, if you talked with us through our Excel 2007 class. It's the same tools. This is an improvement from 2003. You had your charts, your templates. Now you can make the power of data come alive. And I would challenge even the non-techie, non-math, non-finance folks in our audience today, I encourage you to consider adding that. It takes away words. It puts a chart in front of you. You can instantly see a trend. It will become an easier tool for you to communicate why you're better than the competition. Use a chart. Consider using a smart tool here that will allow you to use data more effectively within PowerPoint in less time, most importantly. Now again, what you're seeing are, are snapshots here from our tool. You'll see on the left-hand side you have your chart templates. These are available across all of our templates and our applications. Our tools in the middle, this is a selection, again, from our data source. And this is what you're going to have to look at if you're playing with charts. Don't be afraid. While we don't have Chart Wizard anymore, this gives us a very handy tool for integrating data and very quickly switching the rows and columns if we need to tell a different story. And on the right-hand side, we have our design styles. You can quickly create a chart, and I like to say we make it eye candy. Look at how these graphics come alive. In the printed format, this does, just doesn't do it justice. To see this on PowerPoint on a large screen makes it pop. Your data will come alive. So I encourage you, consider using charts. You don't need to put a thousand words on it. You need to do add a summary line. I do encourage you, if you're using charts or any type of graphic, make sure you leave your users or your audience with a summary line, a, a synopsis, some type of assumption they've walked away from the slide knowing about your use of the chart or the graphic. Now we have presenter tools. For those of you on the road, salespeople, marketing folks, you're always out there on site, you're at trade shows, you're going back and forth between your home office and somebody else's computer. You're always in front of a projector. You're constantly using two different computers. There is a, this is a fundamental shift for PowerPoint. This is a wonderful tool now. They have created a new presenter view. Why is this important? Well, it allows you, this is found under the slideshow tab. You have to turn it on, check it on. But again, this allows you to use two different computers. What you see as a presenter is different from what everyone else uses. This is so powerful, folks. We've been waiting for this for so many years. As a presenter, you're working on a few different levels. You're thinking ahead of a transition, how you're going to segue into the next slide. Perhaps you have a question. Somebody in the audience, you know that person, they're always going to ask three questions in, in, during your presentation. You can stop your presentation and again, your narration and your rehearsal will stop and wait for you. You can see on the thumbnail on the bottom your speaker slides as they're coming up. So as you're, you're talking about this slide here, you can again, again segue and see the next slide coming up. Perhaps you'd like to, based on your questions, hide a slide and not even talk about it. Perhaps you covered it already through a question. You can choose dynamically from these commands to hide a slide instantly. I can rewrite my slide as I'm talking and choose instantaneously to show that instead of the slide that I sent here in my presentation and loaded. Powerful tools. Now what the audience sees up here, again, on screen, they see their content coming through. You have your notes on the side. They don't see that. And it's powerful. You have to get used to the two, again, two different windows. You'll quickly be able to do that. I know you're a multitasker. You'll get used to it. And then again, you know your slides, you know your data. You have your notes coming up, so you don't need to put so much information into your bullets. Make the bullets stand by themselves. Annotate. Use 